Lauren. Yes. And we're going to be talking about your Entre Trip, which is this really cool camp organized by your company, Reinventing Events, right? Correct. Correct. So what is this camp and how did it all get started? Yeah, so a couple of years ago, um, a group of six ladies came together that didn't know each other, um, was organized by another founder, um, to bring people together just to talk a little bit about being entrepreneurs and what does that mean. And we went to Costa Rica, which was kind of awesome. Six Sounds people that amazing. didn't know each other living in a house for a week in Costa Rica. It was great. I feel like you wouldn't have to try very hard to get along with a bunch of people no. as long as you're in Costa Rica. Costa Rica, right? it was great. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, so you've been running it for quite a few times now, right? Yes, this is our third year. We took one year off, so it's uh, we've been doing it for four years with one year um, not happening. And this year we're going to Cancun, <sighs> which is amazing, in December. Perfect time to go to Cancun. Okay, so tell me what these entrepreneurs can expect when they sign up for this trip and like what kind of things can they get out of it? Yes. So the idea is really that as an entrepreneur, small business owner, or mobile worker, you don't always take the time off that you really should be doing to get that rest and relaxation. Very true. It's really hard to get away. Part of it is that maybe you don't want to plan your own vacation and travel by yourself mm -hmm. or you just don't know where to start, vacationing is expensive, whatever the case may be. So what we've done is basically found a really great deal and it, we're allowing people to apply to come join in on this trip. Um, as entrepreneurs and small business owners, it gives us a chance to kind of get real with each other and share those fears, doubts, tips, tricks, all of that good stuff. Sounds like a fabulous retreat and yes. for once they don't have to be running the show. That's right, that's <laughs> right. Um, we do have time built in where uh, people can actually get work done, so mm. it can be a workation if you need it to be, or you can go off the grid. From that. Yes, <laughs> that's awesome. whatever you need to do, whatever you need to do. But if they're doing that, they can sit by the pool, and it's a much better location. Exactly. There's definitely Wi-Fi. You can have a drink in your hand. We won't tell anyone. <laughs> you can answer emails. You can even take phone calls while you're in Cancun. Okay, so this is starting to make me feel like wish that I was an entrepreneur, yes. right? Because I want to come along as well. And I've heard that some non-entrepreneurs have actually come along to see what it's all about. Exactly, exactly. So on the first trip, we had a couple of women who were interested in starting their own mm -hmm. business but weren't sure kind of what to do or where to start. And they came along. And since then, um, they've both left their jobs. This, granted, this was four years ago. <laughs> but they've left their jobs. Um, and one is doing consultant work. And I'm not sure what the other one is doing. But um, just decided that it was time for something a little different. That's super cool. Like, I love those stories that come out of it. Yeah. So this is going to be happening in November, right? Correct. So I'm basically going for two weeks. And I'm opening it up to anyone uh, can come down. You basically select the dates that you want to come. OK. So I'm going November 29th through December 14th. And it's approximately $150 per night. And that's all inclusive. That's so that's your steal. food, your room, mm -hmm. um, tipping. There's no tipping. Uh, I'm also working with a uh, travel agent. So if you need help booking a flight, we can help you with that as well. Fabulous. Yeah. So for people that want to sign up, are there still spots available and how do they do that? Yes, absolutely. And I would love for anyone to come. Um, if you go to entretrip.com, it's E-N-T-R-E. T-R-I-P mm -hmm. com. Um, there is an application tab, so just click the application. Basically, that's just my way to vet of who's coming, why are you coming, you answer a question, like what do you hope to uh, bring to the table and what do you hope to get out of it? So we'll approve your application, I'll help you get a room, help you book your flight, and we'll be good to go. Done and dusted, yeah. thank you so much. This sounds amazing, doesn't it? Please thank Karen for <laughs> talking about Entre Trip. Yeah, thank, thank you. you so much, oh. thank you. Oh. So we are here with Ian, and Ian is from an awesome sounding company called Discotech, mm -hmm. and we're about to talk to you what that's all about. But Great. before I forget, I would like you to do the honor of picking the Downtown Fortune Cookie of the Week. All right, my honor. Anyone you like. Are you getting down I got there? got one. All right, uh, can we get our special Fortune Cookie handler, please, Alan? <laughs> Thank That's you. The one. <laughs> so we're going to play a game with, of telephone with that in the audience later on. Awesome. However, you are here to talk about your company, Discotech, mm -hmm. right? And Discotech just moved to Vegas yep. a couple of months ago, mm -hmm. so welcome. Thank you. It was three months ago, right? Yeah, we moved here from Los Angeles. Okay, so your company does have a special kind of connection with Vegas. Absolutely. And so why don't you tell me what you're all about? Yep. So Disco Tech is an open as uh, a uh, mobile app company. We're live on the iPhone and Android, and we're essentially an open table for nightlife. 
we let our end users um, go on the app and browse for events, see what's going on, see what DJs are playing, and then ultimately get access to the club. So whether it's bu buying bottle service, mm -hmm. signing up for VIP guest lists, or uh, buying pre-sale tickets, it really makes it a lot easier and it lets people kind of avoid the process of going through traditional nightclub promoters. I hate that stuff. It's so stressful that yeah. by the time you've kind of haggled about the bottle service and, and like figured out how to get the free tickets if you're the ladies, because that's a perk of ours, you end up like super grumpy by the time you get to the club. So this takes just all of that effort out, right? Takes out all that trouble. And you know, we really came at it from the consumer side. Absolutely. Uh, just tired of dealing with promoters, getting mm -hmm. burned by different table pricing, having the haggle. We're like, there needs to be an app for this. So me so and my friends, yeah, just... Yeah, and what's awesome about it is you can see the prices right in the app too, right? That's right, yeah. Oh, that's so awesome. a lot of transparency, just taking a lot of the guesswork out of the, the whole process. Okay, so what took you so long to come to Vegas, since this seems like the perfect app, and like sort of mm -hmm. what other cities have you been doing this in? Yeah, so we actually built the product in San Francisco, but mm -hmm. San Francisco isn't really the right city to start a nightlife app. <laughs> so As so many people are just hyping their apartments all night, right? So, yeah, exactly. So we decided to move to LA, um, you know, a, a little bit more busy on the nightlife scene, Definitely. got the app, uh, got some traction for the app, got a lot of clubs on board, and then we're like, hey, this, this thing is working, right? So we decided to come to Vegas, which is really the, you know, the mecca of nightlife. Mm -hmm. And uh, since then, we've gotten all the, kind of the, the major clubs on the strip on board the app, and we're, yeah, we're going from there. So the clubs are happy. I've been hearing that you've been getting great feedback from the consumers mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. What are the next steps for Discotech? Yeah, it's really, um, at this point, time to scale. So the plan, we're currently uh, going to San Francisco, going mm -hmm. back home to uh, kind of <laughs> launch the app there. Mm -hmm. And then it's other big cities, Miami, New York, Chicago. Uh, the idea is really to just let people, you know, no matter where they are, just c kind of be able to go on the app and see what's going on. Well, there's never going to be a shortage of people ready to party. Yeah. So, um, other than... <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. right? So, for people that want to um, <laughs> check your app out, it's obviously in the Google Play Store and the iTunes um, App Store yep. as well. Uh, how else can people get in contact with you if they want to know more or partner with you? Yeah, people can email us. Uh, mm -hmm. we're, we answer emails very aggressively. It's uh, <laughs> info at discotech.me. So I N F O, um, and then discotech is D I S C O T C H, and then dot me, M E. Very clever name, I love it. <laughs> thank you. Cool. Well, thank you so much for being on the show, and please give Ian from Discotech a round of applause. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Thank you. <laughs>
<laughs> so uh, this is not the first time we've hung out and chatted. Um, but uh, in all fairness, it was also Tony Shea and other, <laughs> other, other people were involved. So it wasn't as romantic as you just envisioned. So don't be dirty. Um, OK, but let's talk about let's talk about the fun stuff first. Just what's the motorcade like? And then we'll get serious. But like, do you feel like a million bucks or Iron Man or just like the president? What was it well, like? Well, it was strange. So I got this call, and uh, it was from a congressional office. And they said, OK, is this Evan Louie? I said, yes, it is. And they said, well, we're calling to see if you want to drive, uh, pick up Joe, Vice President Biden at the airport and drive in his motorcade. And I said, Wait, for real? <laughs> like, and they said, right, right. And then they also asked, uh, do you have three or four friends that want to come with you? So I got to submit a list of three friends. Um, then we drove in his motorcade. He gave me this coin. It's a vice presidential coin. Um, interesting thing is actually, wow. so last time you were here, um, we talked to is uh, he was, when he came and visited last time, he was actually was supposed to speak at my warehouse. And we moved it to the Henderson Convention Center. Okay. So that was the original Because you were plan. jumping it around, right? That's all yeah, part we're of that moving it. It was announced kind of to like... be speaking at, at the Kona Ice Warehouse, but then we had to shift it to locations due to capacity limits. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, and I know I'm going to the event. It looked like it was hugely successful. The whole room was full. i never seen so many people who chant on cue. It was great. Yeah. I loved it. <laughs> um, okay. So that was very cool. I saw, I saw that. And I just thought, I can't believe he's in there. That's Because that held up me and all the regular people for a while. Because you guys... <laughs> Had to get wherever you're going instantly, so that's fine. Um, yeah, but let's talk about uh, all this lobbying you've done, the FDA for cancer. Like, what made you, what motivated you to do this, and what kind of success have you had? Um, well, part of the drive of even uh, Kona Ice as a business, too, is that, um, I'll tell you a sad story, Will. In 2007, I married the woman of my dreams, uh, my wife, and uh, unfortunately, four months after marriage, she was diagnosed with brain cancer. Uh, she was seven and a half months pregnant with my daughter, and uh, she was, my daughter was born in preemie. So I spent two years living in hospitals, taking care of a sick wife and raising a newborn baby right. um, until she passed away. And when she passed away in 2008, you know, I took my daughter and I said, kind of create this concept of the art of uh, transference or pain transfers. So I took that pain and emotion and, and drew it to passion uh, to make a difference. So I kind of helped create a coalition of brain cancer uh, nonprofits across the country, uh, created an advisory board of some of the world's top neurosurgeons and neuroscientists, then lobbied the FDA uh, for what is now the standardized form of brain cancer treatment, which is Avastin. It's, a, it's called the angiogenesis so cool. inhibitor. Right. Okay, so we have a lot of entrepreneurs that are kind of driven by passion too. I know this is an extreme case in your sense, but what can you give them as advice to help them kind of channel that passion into like really useful change the way you did? Um, well, I'll tell you a little bit how we formed our, um, our partnership model, and I call it a horizontal and vertical community integration platform. And so what we did is, uh, yeah, it's like sort of in some ways. <laughs> but, but I was getting reached out to yeah. starting partnerships with the school district, the schools, the sports leagues, nonprofits, and then we started partnering with uh, the business community, the chambers, entrepreneurial networks, to city, county, state. Uh, now we're formed over 600 partnerships, so we're partnering oh, with the colleges, great, yeah. we do Zappos uh, fundraising, and then we also wanted to take a, a really different approach, and so what we did is try to uh, promote high-level education. So we did start bringing like NASCAR drivers to the schools to promote, uh, and we actually brought a NASCAR driver, paired oh, up cool. with a, um, another person to talk about the clean water in third world countries. And we visited schools, like there's 1,400 kids in schools, and NASCAR driver would talk about, actually focus on STEM, so they talk about the engineering mathematics right. side of STEM, and uh, just really interesting experience. And we've been just bringing anything from first ladies of countries in partnership with a an or global organization to the Dalai Lama's head abbot who actually spoke at the Learning Village. I gotcha. So for an entrepreneur, you would say really just like reach out to different people in the community and get them involved in what you care about? Uh, well, kind of like get them? A lot of it too is uh, our give back. So we've, we've actually give back 20% of our top line revenue back to school sports leagues and nonprofits oh, gotcha. as a brand. So we're fundraising right. and partnerships. So that's how we formed a lot of these partnerships. Um, and also co-sponsoring a lot of different events within the city. Um, but recently, the Las Vegas Vision Convention Authority chose us as one of three businesses to represent the city of Las Vegas for uh, their Tourism Matters campaign. Oh, their global great. Campaign for the, yeah, so it's Yeah, amazing. congratulations. Right. <laughs> Should we see it around? Okay, so um, when it came to the Kona Ice um, Community Partnership-Centric Model, is that what you were just describing? Is that the same thing yeah, as vertical, it, well, horizontal? Yeah, so what we did is literally looked at what are the, all the aspects of a community. There's civic organizations, from education to school district, 
you know, there's different, the business community and really just started partnering up with more philanthropic focus. Like I said, education. So a lot of things that are, whether it's a summit or a fundraiser, we get our partners like UNLV to co-sponsor events or host events. Um, a lot of our business, even Zappos actually turns around and, and co-sponsors some of our community-based events as well. Okay, so cool. that's, um, and to this date, in the past two years, we've formed, like I said, uh, over 600 partnerships to date. Okay. Um, so, especially for an entrepreneur, what can they learn from your involvement with the White House? Like, are there initiatives that people should know about, or is there a way to work with the White House the same way you did for other people to get things done? Well, actually, just recently we hosted the White House Advisory here, uh, the White House Initiatives on Asian Pacific Islanders. Um, they were hosted at UNLV. So, um, to get involved, actually, there's uh, kind of an economic team that calls that they have, um, and I can forward that to you, or they can forward it to this group here. Yeah. Um, you know, and just participate in, in federal initiatives that may impact your businesses. So, um, and on state side, state capacity, I also chair economic development. So we have to track a lot of uh, things that happen on state. And a lot of the entrepreneurial issues right now we hear is access to capital is one of the key issues for small businesses. So, sure. Yeah, you do a lot of things. Um, <laughs> okay, so wearing a lot of hats. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we'll I guess we'll talk about the best ways to get in touch with you. But I mean, is that something? Uh, is that a public link that you're you're going to share, or Which is one? that like the one day? White House Yeah. Yes. Okay. So maybe you could you guys could tweet at him. Do you have a Twitter? Is that a good place? Yeah. Or I can email link. Okay. Whatever. Do you want your email out there? Yeah. yeah okay. That's fine. Okay. Go ahead. Give, <laughs> give him public. your email then. So we it's can get... uh, uh, it's personal. It's uh, Evan Louie at gmail .com. So that's our uh, it's E V A N L O U I E at gmail .com. Okay. Cool. Um, all right, so, well, you got a bunch of stuff to talk about. I mean, I guess let's, so about this um, Pacific Islanders fraternity, like, do you want to give us that story okay. real quick? Give us so in 1998, uh, we founded the first Pacific Islander fraternity in the Greek system uh, out of San Francisco. And the interesting thing is we promote learning about culture. So learning about the Melanesian, Micronesian, and Polynesian uh, culture, as well as building civic leadership. So a lot of it's not like a typical fraternity where you're doing hazing. Uh, we actually want to promote leadership development. So Stemming from our fraternity okay. since 1998, uh, a lot of the national leaders of the Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander community are actually f formed from our fraternity. So uh, we do a lot of initiatives. One of the things we're focusing on is the 2020 census that's coming up. Oh, cool. Um, so that, that Democratic rally that you had me go to, did she, <laughs> did she win? Was that good? Oh, no. Well, it's still midterm. Oh, it's still happening. <laughs> yes. Okay, cool. November. Um, do you want to plug it? So you're supporting her. Uh, well, yeah. So a friend of mine, Aaron Bilbray, is running for Congress, Congressional District 3. Uh, oh, yeah? Business. And uh, it was her event. She was uh, she was the one that brought uh, Vice President Biden to speak on her behalf, and uh, she's a good friend of mine and helped her out with with her campaign. So I'm um, yeah. here to support her too. I'm registered here now. All right. Yeah. Good job. Nice. Register. Thanks, vote. guys. Yeah. <laughs> Make a difference. I'm going. <laughs> so, okay. Well, okay. So we're almost out of time, but let's like, what's a what's a big overall takeaway? So you've just been through some pretty uh, amazing experiences throughout your life, but like. What's your big takeaway, I guess, from your life that you could kind of share with us? Like, what are the kind of things that drive you day to day that might be helpful? Any big, big, like, broad, like, things to help? Uh, okay, so, <laughs> uh, you know. I'm through all my other questions, guys. Give me, this is a good one. You know, uh, there's a lot of talk about changing the world or making an impact and making a difference. And, you know, I wholeheartedly believe it. You know, I've uh, actually just the other month in August, I was at a global summit in uh, Seoul, Korea meeting with presidents and prime ministers and kings and queens of uh, countries all over the world. Wow. And, um, you know, creating partnerships or relationships with not just the city, county, state, nationally and globally is that, you know, you can meet with a world leader and talk about anything from, you know, peace initiatives to economic development to um, climate change, whatever it may be. And uh, it just makes such a huge impact participating in global humanitarianism. Yeah. So I think I guess uh, it's true because I get that aura like I can't, but I really should just try to reach out to people who are in power and the government and see if they'll listen. It's really, you know, getting out there and making that difference, Dylan. You know that. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for coming out. We right, appreciate thanks, it. Give him a round of applause. Okay. Thank you, Evan Louie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, you guys, I hope you guys have your drinks ready. Wait, you can't go yet. Okay. We've got a song for you. <laughs> We've been drinking beers for hours just for this moment. Like right. you cannot, you cannot run now. Um, yeah, I guess hit it, but he's probably working on it. So. Give it up, Lenny. Hey. <laughs> to our ups and downs, we gather around and sing a drinking song. Oh, you don't have a drink. I know I don't have a drink. <laughs> <laughs>
Praise the rainbow on chairs. <laughs>